Now we're going to use the tools which we learned, the properties of, of the Laplace transform into practice. We're going to use Laplace transform to solve ordinary differential equations. And this involves several steps. You can call the procedure an algorithm. And I want you to pay attention here because this is a very typical sequence of steps you take. And it's generic no matter what ordinary differential equation you'll see. Step one is you take a Laplace transform of left hand side and right hand side. And that will convert your equation from a differential equation to an algebraic equation. The reason why is that this is the case is you've seen in the previous videos that derivatives getting converted into a Laplace transform multiplied by s and s squared sometimes, while integrals are divided by s. And the resulting algebraic equation will depend on, so there will be a known function, let's call it f bar of s, in, in this algebraic equation. So step two is to rearrange this equation so that you can express f explicitly as a function of s. So f bar as a function of s. And step three is to use an inverse Laplace transform to go back from s domain to time domain, that is, from the Laplace transform of, of the function to the original function. So diagram diagrammatically you say that you have an ODE which will become an algebraic equation. Using Laplace transform. And then you find an expression for the Laplace transform of the unknown and then you use an inverse Laplace transform to find a solution for the ODE. Right? Okay, let's get started. But before that, note that in step three, it's often the most challenging step. So it's reasonably straightforward in many cases to go from differential to algebraic, but the going back sometimes requires a little bit of care. And that is why we learned all about partial fractions and quadratic factors. So sometimes if you cannot find this Laplace transform of f bar of s, if you can't find this expression in a table, it means that you might need to use a partial fraction or e express a quadratic factor, so to complete the square in the denominator. And also, for that to work, we need to know the initial conditions. So we need to know what was the state at time zero, and majority of our cases will have this information. But Again, it can be more general than that. But in the simplest case, we'll be told what is the initial value of the function at time zero and sometimes its derivative. Example one. We are asked to solve an ordinary differential equation provided that we know that at time zero, at point zero, it had a value of three. How to do that? Let's apply that algorithm. So step one. First, we take Laplace transform on the left hand side and the right hand side. So for right hand side, which is that, we get as a table expression. So it's 12 over s minus three. And on the left hand side, we have a derivative and a function. So we split it into two using the 
linearity. And then we use the properties of the derivative to find that Laplace transform. Right, so that is the property of a differential of a function. And the other one is more straightforward, you just exactly change the notation. That is just a Laplace transform of y. So a known function y of t becomes a Laplace transform y bar of s. And you use the linear property to get a constant factor outside. Now I put it together. But before that, we need one more consideration. We need to know what is the initial value, because that's a part of the first derivative property. And we have been told that y at a point 0 is 3. So that will tell us this part. And then we just write these together. So simplifying and writing this together, as I said, this is use the condition. we will have the algebraic equation for unknown function y bar of s. So that's an algebraic equation. For unknown Laplace transform of s. So we still don't know what it is, but we can find out. So what we can do, we can express y bar of s explicitly as this. So this is step two. So from that equation we can immediately express y over bar of s as a function of s alone. So we just divide this equation by s plus two. So divide by this. We get that expression. What next? There's just one st step remains. We just need to go back from s domain to time domain and find the original unknown function y of time, y of t. So, but before we do that, we need to simplify the Laplace transform of y because we cannot see the immediately the, the table transform for that. And this is where we apply the partial fractions. So we've seen that 1 over s minus 3 and s plus 2 can be expressed as 1 over 5 times s plus, sorry, s minus 3 minus 1 over 5 s plus 2. Right? That's just using the part of fractions. So in general you just need to have these factors a and b and find other factors. So you've seen it in the previous videos. If you have problems or some, some confusion with the partial fractions, please look blackboard materials. Please get in touch with me. But this is a standard tool which we already looked and we just apply it here. So having simplified that fraction we put it together and say that y bar of s can be written as 12 times first part of the partial fraction 5s minus 3 minus the second part 1 5s plus 2 and also we have the other bit remaining is 3 1 s plus 2. So now we are going to invert that to find an inverse Laplace transform and we just write that the unknown desired which we want to find is a lap inverse Laplace transform of y bar of s and we just use a linear property to write it down as 12 over 5 inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 3 
minus 12 over 5 Laplace transform, inverse Laplace transform of 1s plus 2 and again minus inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 2. Okay, do I agree? And apologies. And that just can be done using the tables. So looking at this, we can write this down as 12 over 5 exponential of 3t in normal time domain minus 12 over 5 over 5 exponential minus 2t and plus 3 exponential to the same power minus 2t. And if we simplify it one more step, we will get 12 over 5 exponential of 3 over t plus 3 fifth of exponent to the power of minus 2t. And that is the answer. So that's what we wanted to know. The unknown function, which is solution to our differential equation, as a function of time. And we could have also done it using the conventional tools you might have learned and you probably remember in the previous uh, course unit in the spring. Let's look another at the, let's look at the another example. Let's look at the second order differential equation, which involves a second order, first order derivative of the function and also right hand side. And this time we are given two initial conditions, the value of the function itself and the value of its derivative. And they're both zero to make life simple. And we do the recipe again. Step one, take Laplace transform of the left hand side. and the right hand side. And use the initial conditions. Because they are zero, so both of these functions are zero, that is disappearing. And you are left with the simplified expression. And then step two. you express Laplace transform of unknown function as a function of s. So that is the algebraic equation. And you get the explicit expression. And now the only remaining part is to find an inverse Laplace transform of that function. So step three find inverse Laplace transform of that function. And we need again to use partial fractions here. So we express the partial fraction as a sum of partial fractions. Or if we cannot, Right, so here we have a combination of two. So one of these is partial fraction, but another one cannot be reduced to sum of partial fractions. So we use completing the square. So that is partial fraction, and that is completing the square. And then we apply the inverse Laplace transform to that function, which is the same as applying inverse Laplace transform to that function. Right? And here you just use a table expression. So the first term will lead to that, and the second term to that. And here again, we used 
a linearity and the tables. So our final answer is an exponentially decaying term and an exponentially decaying oscillating term with the cosine. There is a quick note here that if you are not given initial conditions for differential, ordinary differential equation, you just assume their constants. So if somebody told you solve, uh, solve ordinary differential equation using Laplace transform, you just assume that if you have a first order equation that at time zero there was a constant value and if it was a second order differential equation you had both initial value and also initial derivative. So that was an illustration of how we can solve differential equations using Laplace transform.